house, things are starting to quietly get going and I've got some onions and shallots already potted up and in the corner there I've just sown some leeks. But already I'm getting a bit of an issue with space. So what I'm going to do is over here on the left hand side I'm going to have to construct some form of a staging so I can put my pots on this side and then when the uh, seedlings are gone out into the open ground later in the year I can then take the staging down and use it for my tomatoes and melons. But it's very cold on the allotment at the moment. Let's have a look what's going on outside. There's not a lot. Beautiful sunshine today though. So like I said, with my recent health issues that certainly put pay to the development of the fruit garden. I was hoping it would be done by now but it hasn't been so I'll just do that slowly. All the fruit is in pots so that's fine. One thing I, I have noticed is that the the rhubarb is already com coming through the uh, soil and what I'll do at this time of year is as I'm emptying pots to use them again I'll throw the spent compost on top of the, the rhubarb crowns. Next to that are my daffodil bulbs and talking about daffodils I did notice over on this side that bed there needs to be weeded That's for my zinnias this year I did notice down here where are they that my daffodils are already starting to come up which is a bit early and if you look further down I've just noticed some primrose are just coming into flower as well. A bit difficult to see from this angle. My rosemary bush here doing wonderful service. So yes, all this side still needs to be done and all this is going to be sorted out and what can be recycled will be put onto the sharing bench and what can't be recycled will be going into the skip. Strawberries in the raised bed. Now here are some violas I've been growing in the greenhouse and I've brought them outside because I noticed there was a bit of uh, uh, insect hiding underneath so I've brought them out in the hope that the the cold weather will kill them off. I'm thinking about getting rid of these plastic chairs this year and getting something a bit more stylish. One thing I'm looking forward to this year are these foxgloves. I grew these from seed and that was about two years ago and I'm waiting for them to give the first flower spikes. Now next door to that is verbena and obviously it's dead now this time of year and I could cut all this down but I quite like a bit of structure in the garden during the winter so I will leave that there. Let's have a look at what's going on in the veg patch. I don't know if you've noticed but I've taken down the uh, the poles. So that's all my fruit, that's waiting to go into the uh, fruit section but like I said it's all in pots so I'm not worrying about it that much. You can stay there for a bit longer. Now there is something to crop. Over here is my pak choy and this has been out in the weather for quite a few months now and it's giving fantastic service and what I'm doing is rather than harvesting the whole lot at the same time I'm just, there he is, I'm just picking off a leaf or two as I need it and that way it gives me more of a crop during the winter. Now a big shout out and thank you to Vivi because I put a call out to the members of this uh, society down here asking everybody that I've helped over the years or I've given free things to like bits of wood when I got rid of the raised beds I put a call out for everybody to come and uh, help me because of my back issues and only Vivi responded which is what I was expecting it just goes to show 
sometimes people just take and they just don't give. So my view of certain interactions on the plot has changed and it's the episodes like this that you certainly know who your friends are. So Vivi brought all these bags down. There's still a few more bags to bring down but I'll help Vivi and we'll bring them down slowly over the next few weeks. So this is the the depth of the bed. It's about a foot and a half and I'm not putting the compost all the way up to the top. I'm just putting it a few inches below. Now over Christmas I was planning to empty as many bags as possible. I thought that is something I could do quietly but they were frozen so I couldn't do too much. This is the bed that I did try to do. As you can see I started that one then ended it. But it's starting to take shape. Let's have a quick look at my, uh, oh and the fruit trees there, they need to be planted as well, but like I said, I'm going to take my time with them, no need to rush. Let's have a look at the hot bin. A few flies in there, it's probably quite warm, oh no, it's 9 degrees at the moment, so it's not that warm in there. It has been warm, yesterday was quite a hot day there. I'm going to dismantle this, or I might offer it to Vivi first, see if she wants this uh, cold frame. The problem I've got is, is it's a bit too windy. I'm on a bit of a wind avenue here, so the wind uh, was blowing it all over the place. In fact, it blew it two plots away. I know people will say, well, you could try and screw it down, but I just think it looks a bit too big anyway. So I've got something else coming in the post which I think will be better. There he is, the first look for the new year. How are you doing? So that's it. Not a lot. There's a bit of grass coming up on the uh, path, but I'm going to deal with that with adding a vinegar solution. And over here, the reason why there's a board on top of this one is because I don't want any cats pooing in there, or foxes because that is where my new seed bed is going to be when the year really kicks off in about a month's time. So let us start off in the greenhouse. These are my sweet peas. And is there anything showing? Oh yes. The first shoot has just started. Just about to see it. Anything else? Nothing else. My tulips, I, I found this uh, bag of tulips about a month ago. So I just threw them into some pots and look, they're already started to just come up. Now my seeds next door to it, these are some of my, well, there's different uh, things here. I've got onions down the far end, which nothing has appeared. There is a, a lettuce called winter winter Densed, density uh, the calabrese is starting to show the cauliflower just about coming out they need a bit of watering and onions nothing to show on the onions so things are slowly but quietly getting back into production over on the onions here it may look as if nothing's happening but if we just have a closer look at the at the onions. If I just try and pull that one out, I can feel that the roots are in the soil. So something is going on. Oh, look, there we go. There's a tiny bit of green life next door to that. I never thought I'd say it. This is these are my tea plants. My tea production. I'm keeping them in because it's getting very cold in February down here, so I don't want to risk it. But I've just noticed next door. I didn't think any of my leeks were showing, but this is going to be too small for you to see. Just down by my finger there. There you go. You can just about see the uh, shoot starting. And I can see them all over. The tiny little translucent shoots are popping up. So something's going on. We just need a bit more heat. Today is a beautiful day. And in the greenhouse, it's 
17 degrees, but recently the average green, uh, greenhouse temperature has been minus 6, so we're not getting too excited. Sun's just popped out. It's been raining for the past few weeks. Look at this down here. Can you see them? First sign of spring. In fact, there's a bud on that daffodil. Oh, it's good to feel that sun on the skin, I must say. But with my issues with my bad back, I've lost a month to six weeks of production. So not a lot's gone on. This is the fruit garden, still empty, because I just haven't had time to come down. But the daffodils and the hyacinths and everything that I've got, tulips, they're all starting to uh, sprout into action. And next door to that, look at this. It's beautiful to see the rhubarb coming back into production. Vivi and I, at the end of the month, we're going to get a skip. So we're going to spend the day sorting through all this rubbish and things that we can save, we'll save them and give them to the other plot holders down, down here and things that we can't save then we'll throw them in the skip. So all I want now is my back to be better and a few good days of dry weather on the plot so I can come down and crack on with things. Look at my um, fox gloves. I did these from seed two years ago, so this year will be the first year that they'll give me a really good display. Ah, and just next door to that, I've just noticed, this is a pussy willow, as we used to call them as children. And look, you can see the little pussy willows, willows are started to come out. What plants or flowers remind you of your childhood? Tell me in the comments below. Look at the greenhouse. Looking good there. Haven't seen any frogs in the pond yet. But they're in there hiding. Right. So this section here. There's going to be a few changes. As you know, I do like a change now and again. So in this corner here, this is where a rose garden is going to go. But let's go in and have a look at the veg garden so far. Again, because of my back, nothing's gone on here. So all the fruit is still in their uh, pots, ready to be moved. And all the soil still needs to be taken out of the bags and put into the beds. So there's lots to do. At the moment though, I'm not stressing too much about it. In the grand scheme of things, I'm still on track. As long as I can get all this work done by the end of March, then I'll be ready for the seed sowing times in uh, April. While we're at the top end here, let's have a quick look at my hot composter, because I haven't seen it for over a week. What's the temperature saying there? 15 degrees. Right, stand by. There's a bit of heat coming off it, but what I'll do is I'll get some wood chips and I'll just throw some wood chips in the bottom just to make it uh, hotter. So that's what the garden looks like at the start of February. Not a lot going on. Down this section, this will be where my runner beans are going. So there's quite a bit of work to be done. And I'm going to keep this contraption, I'm going to fix it, and I'm going to use it somewhere in the garden. I'm not quite sure where yet. I'm still harvesting my pak choy. I'm not harvesting the whole thing at the same time, I'm just taking a, a leaf from each plant, just taking a few, and they're very good for stir fries. Or in fact, give them a quick brush. They're very good for just eating on the plot. Beautiful.
beautiful day today. And that's the allotment. Not a lot going on, but now we're into March, then things can really go forward fast. Got some broad beans in. They're in this bed here. They really should shooting themselves up now. And the fruit, I've started to put the fruit into spaces throughout the garden, rusty there. So there's a gooseberry in the corner there, next door to a pear, which I will do in a fan uh, shape. And then on this side, there's another pear. Nothing's gone on this side this month. I think this could be the quickest tour ever. What do you say, Rast? So, let's have a look in the greenhouse. Oh, on the right-hand side here, my rhubarb's coming up, and I could take a harvest if I was desperate for some, but I'll leave it a few more weeks to bulk up, and my spring bulbs are shooting up in the pots there, and the hyacinth just starting to give out its hyacinth uh, scent, filling up the garden here. So let's have a look in the in the greenhouse. Oh, it's nice and warm in here. In fact, it's so warm that the air vents have opened. It's 30 degrees in here at the moment. Celsius, which is 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, very warm. A bit too warm, but the plants will be loving it. Because here, yeah, these are my onions and uh, my leeks. Don't we come in. I just I keep kicking my horse watering can. I'm gonna have to move that. So where were we? Now these are the onions that I sold last week and look at them, they're already starting to come up. Gorgeous. In fact I've got plenty more to uh, go into pots there. I'm trying to find time at the moment to do and to do anything. Ah it's so warm in here a few of the seedlings have suffered because things like uh, the brassica family, calibrace, they don't like it too hot. Some like it hot, they don't. So I'll give them a really good dose of water before I leave. And my tulips are coming up. Now ah, the heat's helping the the sea holly to germinate. And a very poor germination rate on my sweet peas, so I'm gonna to have to sow some more. But one plant that will be loving this heat is my tea, my tea bushes. And also the geraniums there doing wonders. Nothing from my um, potatoes yet, although if you can see the ground is starting to crack. I think if we have this heat for a few more days then I think a potato leaf will be shooting up very quickly. But look at that sight. Sunshine. So much so that it's brought the, the fountain on. My catkins, as we call them. Look at them. It's a beautiful sight. But yes, I haven't been down here much the past few weeks, been too busy. So if this sun is staying for the next few days, and hopefully I can get down here, and I can crack on with the jobs. Look at that site. That's a beautiful site. Who needs to go abroad when you've got this at home? And this is how the allotment's looking at the start of April. I've planted some of my fruit. This is an apple. And got some beautiful uh, buds on it. And there's also one over here. This is another apple. And as far as the beds are concerned, 
got a few crops coming up. Now most of the beds are still empty. There's Rusty. Hello Rust. Most of the beds are still empty. In this one I have some potatoes, the main crop potatoes. But in the next one things are actually starting to be produced. These are my uh, onions or these shallots. I'll have a look at the, the label now. And some broad beans next door. There's been a few misses so I've put some new seed in as well. That's shallots. That's what my sign says. So there's things in there. There's nothing in this bed yet but I'm going to keep this one for my carrots and maybe parsnips. Now this one's interesting. This is my first early potatoes and they've started to come up. These ones here in the corner, you might remember, I planted these ones by the phases of the, phases of the moon. And the other ones I planted about a, two weeks later. So they're all coming up at the same time. These ones are a bit more advanced, but it's too early on yet to come to any conclusions. And nothing in these two beds. They still need to be filled. But in this one, I noticed this morning that I may have a bit of an issue. In this bed, this is where I planted my main crop peas. I've just put these twigs on just to protect it from cats. But down in this corner here, it looks like a squirrel's been in. It's been having a feed. So I'm going to have to construct something because it, it'll be time to take all this off soon. Otherwise, they'll start to grow all into them. But look, the first of the peas. Very nice. They look too. More fruit. This is my gooseberry, a uh, standard gooseberry, and. They've got some really sharp prickles on this, so I thought I'd hide it in the corner here. And just to the side of them, look at these. I do like a fluted tulip. And the colour on them is gorgeous. We'll come back to them in a minute. And some more fruit trees. This is my pear. Now the plan is, I'm going to set up... A, um, some form of support so I can tie them in and make like a fan shape from them. It's rusty. And the same over in this corner. There's another pair over here as well. Uh, now this is called dinosaur kale. It's a kale then once you have it in the garden it'll just grow th throughout the winter and all you do is just you come down and just pick two or three leaves and that's all. I had this from Charles Dowdin when I, when I went to visit him oh, two years ago now I think. Now in this corner I had a bit of a clean up so these are some pots that I'm either going to recycle or give away to friends so they're mostly pots, which I'll be needing a bit later on. You'll discover why once you get into the greenhouse. So, let's just go through. Now, this section needs a bit of uh, mowing. The old mower needs to come out. I've completely neglected this, this section during winter. So, this is the flower bed. So a good bit of weeding over Easter will be needed. But over there in the corner, if you remember, two years ago, I did some foxgloves and seeds. And this year will be the first year that they'll flower. And you can already see the spikes just waiting to shoot up down there. And my pussy willow is really taking hold. It's establishing it itself very nicely there. Again, this bed needs to be cleaned. And I'm thinking about putting just a bed of zinnias in there. 
can come back to the pond in a minute. It's getting quite windy now. So we've had some beautiful sum, uh, summery weather the last few days. My grass, I do like my grass. Just sit down and play with it. Rusty loves to sleep in it as well. And over here now, look at this. This is my red love apple tree. Ah, now that, that's interesting. I put two fat balls in there two three days ago. Well, yes, I think we might have a squirrel problem. Yeah, so back to the, the red love apple tree. Look at the flowers. This is the apple tree that when you cut the apple, it's red all the way d down to its core. And when you cook it, the redness stays. It's called red love apple. Now, a few changes coming up. In this section here, this is where I'm going to be creating my rose garden. I'm going to be moving some of the roses that I've got around the pond. And I'm putting them here because it'll be easier for people to bend over and sniff them. And this section needs a bit of tidying up as you can see. And I've got some fruit bushes that will be, these fruit bushes here will, will be going into this section when it's finished. The last fortnight the herbs have really started to come back. These are the lupins that I potted on in the greenhouse. Be careful with lupins because slugs and snails love them. But this is what I wanted to show you. My herb garden is starting to come back. And if you've got mint in your garden, please keep it in a container. Because if you don't, it will completely take over the garden and turn into a weed very quickly. This is some saxifrage which I'm going to plant uh, around the pond. Strawberries, they're, they're coming back. I, I have reduced the amount of strawberries that I've got this year. Um, I just had a bit too many last year to... Uh, I got a bit fed up with strawberries, to be honest. This is the Prince William tree, a tree that's native to Canada, which has small little blackberries on. And tulips are coming to an end now. But they've put on a beautiful uh, colour. I've got no idea where I got this tree from. What's it called? There you go. Consumer tree or something. But the colours of it, really beautiful. So yes, there's a bit of weeding to be going on down there. But I'm not getting stressed about it. And my daffodils in pots, they're starting to go over now, come to an end. What I will do is, at the, at the end of the season when they're completely gone, I will tip them out of the pots and put these ar uh, around the pond, I think. But look at these ones. These have started to come out in the last few days. And the colour on them. It's really interesting. Let's see if I've got the name on. There you go. That's the name. One crop I do need to harvest is the, uh, the rhubarb. It's put it on a fantastic display. Somebody asked me how, how do I get it so big. One thing I do is when you harvest some stalks, I cut the leaves off because obviously they're poisonous, but I put the leaves back in the plant. So, oh, look at the thickness on that one. So I just cut the leaves off and I put the leaves back around the plant. So all the goodness from the leaves then goes back into it. This is a cherry tree and this year should be the first year but I have some cherries from them. Again, I might have to get a fruit cage. A pond. Spent many a slack afternoon looking into this. And so far this year, I've found two frogs and about 20 newts. So it's really teeming with life. 
and as always you get the camera out and they'll, they'll disappear. These are the roses here that I had from Chelsea Flower Show and these are the ones that I will be moving and putting them down into the new rose garden. We'll have a look in the uh, greenhouse in a moment but let's go in the shed because there's been a few changes. So a bit of a what do you call it, an organised mess at the moment because I've been doing a bit of DIY over the last few days and my workstation here is a bit a bit bigger and I've been if I can get in here at the moment because it's a bit of a tricky job so that's the new tea station and I've strengthened the uh, the shelves and I've put the light up in fact I've put the light up attaching it by a hanging basket chain and then to the right of that is my bookcase and where I'm keeping my cups. So, still a bit of work to be going on in here. And the greenhouse is the busiest part of the entire plot at the moment. We're starting to get a bit nippy now. That's one thing you must remember with all this fantastic weather we've had. It's still getting quite cold in the evenings and I'll be able to demonstrate that now when we go into the greenhouse. So it was 38 degrees today but I know that two days ago it went down as cold as 5 degrees. What is it now? 19 degrees now. So. Plenty of work to be getting on in the uh, greenhouse, my zinnias, and it's getting to the point now that you sow something on a Sunday, but the end of the week is already up. So the zinnias need to be potted up. My celeriac I noticed today has finally come through. My snapdragons, that's quite in interesting. There seems to be a bit of mold on the right hand side, so, but I've still got plenty. My onions, they need to go out now. They can go out over the next uh, few days. And in the corner there are my herbs, my borage there, and all the other ones that I've done. And these have shot up as well. Now, the, the leeks I sowed in January, and I would expect them to be a bit further on than what they are. So what I've done as a safety net is I've sowed some more as well. So I've got two batches. And what we have here, Coreopsis, that's quite a nice flower that's started to come up. Diaceas, Calendulas, Rebecca's. I must have tipped some tomato seeds because I'm finding in all these pots stray. In fact there's one there. Is that a tomato? That, no, that could not be a tomato. And what we have here, the sunflowers have started to come up as well. More tomatoes. I've got loads of tomatoes to, to be potting on. And the calendula, they've started to come up, otherwise known as pot marigolds. And look how attractive these are here. These are my lavateras. Look at them. Just keep an eye on your seedlings, because you may have to turn them around so that they don't all grow the same way. So that side's busy. This side is even busier. There's lots of uh, seeds waiting to come up and what's this one? That's my sea holly. Again three tomato plants. Uh, cosmos. All these need a really good watering. And my cornflowers. Look at that, I think I must have tipped the whole packet in. And to the side there are some of my, some of my potatoes that have been loved being indoors here. And I've had success on my second batch of sweet peas. And just for some of the American viewers who are a bit confused, this is sweet pea the flower. It's not a pea that just happens to be sweet. And my 
Calabrese is looking wonderful. Look at that. Oh, and this is the first um, sweet pea that I had this year. Now what you could do is, if you want them to be a bit more bushier, let me just take that out. If you want them to be a bit, uh, like to have a specimen of flower, what you could do is, you could take off these side shoots. So just nick them off with the scissors ideally. So just take them down like that and then just grow one, one stem. And when it gets to about, uh, what's that, eight inches, 10 inches, you can nick the little tops off if you want them to get bushier. And if you don't, then leave the top in and then you can grow them as professionals would do them. I'm really impressed by these this year. And on the top shelf, these are my peppers. These need to be uh, potted on as well. I seem to have gone salvia mad this year. This is a bright red flower. And my cabbages, they're starting to look good as well. And with the pots that have two seedlings in, I will just cut out the the weakest one. Which might be a bit of competition there because they all look really really nice. How's that? That's that's a new one on the scene. He spotted us. Don't think I've seen him before. And finally, in this section we've got some more tomato plants. And this is my cauliflower called Mayflower and on the corner there we've got some fuchsias. So in the greenhouse it's looking very busy and there's even more things to sow and I've got plenty of things to be pricking on and transplanting so I think my time in the greenhouse will be busy over the coming few weeks. So that's it. Things are really starting to kick off on my allotment garden in April. Well, let's start up the top of the allotment and the apples are coming into bloom. These are the new apples. It's a rather windy day today and a few of the beds are now starting to fill up. So this one here, I've just put all this contraption on just to mainly stop cats and foxes and I'll change it in about a week's time to put a fine mesh on it because inside of the brassicas the kale and the cauliflowers and I'll put a finer mesh on to stop any uh, cabbage butterflies from getting in because if they get in they lay their eggs at the base of the uh, of the plant and they just de devour it so just put that there for the time being nothing in the top bed here that's where my sweet corns go in now in this one I've got some potatoes I can tell you these are main crop potatoes and then next door to that I've got my broad beans they were affected by the frost a couple of weeks ago but uh, they'll be okay the flowers are now starting to come out so we'll get some beans and next door I've got a fantastic crop of uh, shallots this year in fact I could start harvesting them because I tend to use them as um, spring onions gibbons as we call them in Wales. Over here that, that's, a, that, that's a free bed that's waiting for some stuff and here are the um, potatoes, I forgot what they were called then. These are the potatoes that were damaged by frost a few weeks ago but they're getting back to, they're getting back to normal but it's going to take a, a while so that's probably this frost probably push the harvest back for about three weeks. Over here there's a Rusty, he's just had his food and in the gaps here I'm putting some uh, fruit. So this one is a four berry and that will have enough space there to uh, to get big. So like I said onions, red and white, if you can, come on, off you, off you go, off, red and white, and in this corner again there's another 
Forbury. And next door to that is this perpetual cabbage. And now's the time to harvest it. So I, I come down, I just take a leaf or two. You don't need too much, but this just stays all the year. And it's quite a sturdy thing. In fact, I could cut this back and just keep some of the new gross because it's getting rather big. That's what I might do. That came from Charles Dowdin's garden. We're getting a tour guide today. Look. And then over here, this is where my salads will go. But at the moment there are peas there and the salads I'm thinking about putting in the front. My lettuces and things like that. Now this is where the runner beans were going to go, down the side here. But we haven't had rain for about eight weeks and the ground is solid so I'm going to make a start on that soon. Hopefully uh, next weekend. It's just the ground is so, so solid. It's breaking the for uh, forks, what do you put it in? This is my gooseberry, and I'm finally getting some little flowers on, which turn in into gooseberries, of course. And next door to that are my pears. This is new, this went in uh, about a month ago, two months ago, and that's already getting well established. Right, let's go through the fence. It's rather windy today, I must say. This is the Red Love apple tree, and I'm hoping that it didn't get affected by the frost that we had, because it was covered in bloom. Um, there's, lots, there's lots going on, and if every one of these turns into an apple, then I think it would be a bumper year. But I will go through them and thin them out, but I'll keep that as a, for a job later in the month. I'll just go over here. Now, I've neglected this side this year, so this is one of my tasks is to come and cut the grass and weed it. There are plants in here, that's, um, that's a daisy. Next door to that are my fox gloves. And look at the strength on, on those spikes. Wonderful, and the mallow in the back there. And then we come over to a pond. I put this stone here as a way of just sitting down and observing the pond. So as I said, this needs to be weeded but the plants are in the greenhouse, so they aren't ready to come out yet, so there's no rush to get that sorted just yet. So that's the pond. I put one of these barley uh, straws. I don't know if I can get it up for you. There you go. One of the barley straws to clear the pond. That went in about a week ago. Just attached it to a bit of cord, a bit of string. But it's full of newts and uh, frogs. Got some oxide daisies in there, so that'll be quite a good uh, display. This is what I was talking about the other day, about my tree being affected by the frost. Look at that. All the leaves on this side. But it's just on this side, the other side seems to be okay. And let's have a quick look at the herbs. Right, just before we go to the herbs, let me just show you this patch. This still needs to be developed. This is where the rest of the fruit is going. The majority of the fruit is now in, and a rose garden will go down beyond the plastic chairs. I've just found out that my plot, that the plot next door has now been given a neighbor. So hopefully that, that will look different uh, in a couple of months. It's a big job, but if you do a little bit and do it often, then you'll certainly win the game. But look at my herbs. They're really putting on weight now, especially this, this one. I think this is a pineapple uh, mint. And next door to this are my strawberries. The black ones there have been affected by frost, but new flowers will come, so don't be concerned about them. And where are we now? Look at these flowers. Bits of summer are coming already. Spring went as quickly as, as it arrived. Forget-me-nots are bordering the, uh, the rhubarb here, which is huge, and I've taken quite a few uh, chunks of harvest to make my apple crumbles and my apple juices and things. 
not my apple crumbles, my rhubarb crumbles. And, hello, somebody's keeping an eye. And the roses, they are now starting to come back into bloom. In fact, I've just noticed we've got a first rose out. I got this from Chelsea last year, I think it was. Oh, it's a beautiful scent on it. So there's still a... A garden is never finished. If you get somebody that tells you my garden's finished, then a garden is never finished. There's always something to do. So let's have a look in the in the greenhouse where there's lots of activities going on. My... Let me just close the door. My potatoes, I put these in... Let me have a look when I put them in. Uh, I haven't got it on the label, but the variety is called Red Duke of York and I'll be interested to see what comes of them because I've been growing it in this uh, I'm not quite sure what it is. It's a bit like wool um, So I wouldn't be surprised if there isn't anything there at all because there's Because I, ha I have looked down, but I can't find anything so it'll be interesting to harvest them maybe you know about a week or two because they have flowered, so they are ready to be harvested. I need to come in here and give everything a really good soaking. So let's have a look. These are my mallows. Put it on tremendous weight, making some really good plants. As soon as they grow to about six foot, I'm not going to put all these in the garden, so I might take some home and give some away to some local uh, charities or something. This is my celeriac that I transplanted last week and it's transplanted really well and put it on a bit of weight now there. Nice sturdy uh, seedlings. And again, salvias. I, I, was, I seem to have gone mad with salvias this year. Oh, look at that. Is that a flower coming? I think there could be a flower coming in the salvias. Now my tomato there, I could actually put that into a grow bag, but one of the problems I've got is my grow bag is going here, so I need to shift things around a bit. My shark fin melon there, I put it on tremendous weight. I have been told that it's rather a large plant, and if that's the seedling, then it's going to be huge in the garden. Uh, sweet peas, I could, I could actually put them out. I'm just, we've got a week coming up where we could possibly still have some more frost, so I'm just being really cautious this year. These are some spare plants that I've got, the cabbages and kales, so I need to get rid of them. Uh, some broad beans, they've popped up as well. This variety is crimson flowered. It's an old heritage uh, variety. And the rocket that I sowed last week, I think it was, that's finally come up. And again, China asters need to be transplanted, along with a few other things as well. Look at all these tomatoes, and I don't even like tomatoes. So I'll give some of them away to the new plot holder that's taken on the plot next door. And even more uh, celeriac. Now that's interesting. I don't know if this will show up on the camera, but can you see these like silver trails? That means there's a slug or snail around. And I've tried to be really careful this year with keeping them out of the greenhouse. So I will have to have an explore to see where that slug and snail is hiding and because I don't want it to destroy all these zinnias that I planted on uh, that I sold on March the 28th so it's a lot of transplanting going on at the moment oh look at these cucumbers these were put in about two weeks ago making beautiful seedlings now so they'll be ready to transplant soon and next door to that are my Brussels sprouts Brassicas don't like it too hot, and I think the reason why I've done so well with my brass brassicas this year is because of the automatic vents that I've got, and I've put them on a really high setting, so as soon as it gets the tiniest bit of heat, they open up. These are my sweet peppers. They're looking really good, because I've always found it difficult to do uh, peppers from seed, and sometimes I've bought plants to make it easier. These, I'm really looking forward to these. These are the everlasting uh, straw flowers, also known as helichrysums, and I love them. You can pick them at the end of the season, and it gives you colour throughout the year when you take them in the house. 
again a transplant weekend coming up now my sweet corn they were put in about oh, a week ago so I'm okay with the um, the progress so far now somebody asked me why I've got all this green on top and it usually happens when you water from the top if you water from the bottom you don't get it as much but it's when you water from the top usually with one of those fine mist uh, spray cans which is exactly what I've got again spare plants these are cabbages tundra in fact, no these these ones aren't spare these are to go into my plot but I think I, I have got spare because I only wanted to grow about four this year and these I've just noticed these these are the rubber beans they're finally coming into uh, beautiful plants there and the variety of this is uh, firestorm I planted these about two weeks ago I think when I put them out like I said they're going down the side of the uh, plot on the right hand side there so I'm gonna have to get on really sharpish because these are these will be ready to grow out in about a week's time again more brassicas more tomatoes all ready to grow out I started doing the zinnias last week so they're establishing themselves in their pots there and look at these beautiful plants these are this here is the borage and these are the um, calendulas Nicoti uh, Nicotiana they are ready to uh, be potted on as are the Coreopsis this is a beautiful orange like pom-pom uh, flower what do we have here more celeriac uh, rebecca's need to be transplanted and these I might these are the, these are the cornflowers and I'm thinking about leaving them in here until they're ready to grow out and what I'll do is I'll just take out four clumps uh, I might be able to get six clumps from that and I'll put them outside now my leeks I've got these leeks here and I sowed these in February and I've got some leeks where are they I've got some leeks in the corner which I sowed a couple of weeks ago but I'm interested to find out whether you've had a slow germination with leeks this year because I was talking to Muddy Boots and he said that his leeks have been quite uh, slow in getting off the t in getting off the bench this year so I'd be interested to uh, find out whether you've had the same issue I'm going to do another sowing in about a week's time and then I'll just keep an eye on uh, which ones are the best I've just noticed look there's a bit of grass there and this seedling has fallen down from my ornamental grass that I have in the corner I put it there because I wanted to uh, put one in a pot I thought it'd be quite an architectural plant and it's the same type of grass that is out down by the bench it's the type of grass that Rusty just loves to roll around in and I wanted to create some more so I could put it in the uh, the right hand side of the, the bench there there's a lot going on and it's a transplanting month this month uh, March and April was all about uh, sowing the seeds and May is all about transplanting and getting ready a lot of things I would wait for until June to put them straight out if you wanted to do uh, seeds because like I said next week in my part of the UK they say that we could have a final blast of cold air coming down from the North Pole so I'm being a bit cautious because I've experienced it in the past where you do all your seeds and you put them out and then a cold blast comes and kills everything and it does really put you uh, off gardening for a bit I remember about 10 years ago I put my sweet corn in I started these plants from small seeds about two months earlier and I had beautiful big plants put them out and I put them out on the day of the evening of when we had the final frost I came down the next day and everything had gone and it had, it really put me off coming down to the plot for about a month or two so be a bit extra cautious this year in putting stuff out well 
Rusty's jumping around all over the place. He's already had his food once, so I don't know why he wants more. Right, well I think it's time to head off then. Cup of tea for me, and a bit of food for this old uh, rascal here. So until next time, bye for now. It's been raining for over 24 hours now, and it's a welcome relief, because we haven't had it for at least 10 weeks, possibly even 12 weeks. So it's a good sight. But I've got to be on guard for those slugs and sails, because they'll be out in force. So I'm keeping an eye on all my little plants that I've got out in the uh, plot but it's good for the soil it does break it up Vivi was down there this morning and she was working a bit of soil and it was turning over beautifully so let's go and explore now I put these into this water bath to try and protect them from the slugs and snails and they don't seem to have got them and look I've got my, my first looping spear because slugs and snails love lupins and sweet peas so they in fact can go out into the open ground once we get some fine weather which is possibly on the weekend I've been looking at my broad beans the last few days and on the ones that I have nipped out there's a bit of blight on, on there so I'll just nick that off like so but I've noticed this strange looking leaf and I'm thinking my instinct is that it's, it's very similar to a problem that allotment diary Dan had a few years ago and I think there's a possibility that the manure within this soil could be contaminated this seems to be the only place where it's happened there it is again so if you've had this then tell me in the comments below and if you've got a solution for it tell me that as well see it's very weird initially I thought it might have been frost damage but this has been curling over for the last few weeks so far it doesn't seem to be affecting the beans I've got some beans down there that are nice and fattened and everything else doesn't seem to have affected that either. My potatoes are really putting on some weight now. These are the uh, the main crop potatoes. Again, the same sort of compost, and there doesn't seem to be any issues here. All seems to be okay, but these are what I was concerned about tonight: the runner beans. Just come down, keep an eye on them, make sure they aren't being eaten. But this spot of rain will be very handy for my parsnips and my carrots. They can now get on and start germinating, because they've been in for over a week now. Look at my cabbages and my broccoli. Very nice. Can't see any slugs and snails in there so far. Tonight will be the test when they come out tonight. This is my carrot bed. Again, I'm waiting for my little uh, shoots to come up. Now, my potatoes. Let's have a quick chat about these. These are my first earlies, I think. And the ones on the right are the ones that I planted by the phase of the moon. And the ones on the left here are the ones that I just planted whenever. But the problem was, this section here, they were growing a well beautifully, and then we had a frost, and it killed them back. So I was hoping they would recover, and some of, some of them have, but not a lot of them. So I think this test that I'm running on these potatoes might actually be null and void. I might have to do it again next year. But the ones that weren't affected by the frost, because they were obviously put in later, are doing really well. Also, a quick update on my peas. had a bit of bother last time with the uh, foxes or the cats and they seem to have caught back up again and they're doing fine. I'm gonna have to put some sticks behind this section and just slightly push it forward so that it knows where the canes are but uh, I think the day has been saved. 
for the peas. I've had lots of comments about this plant and I finally got to the bottom of it. It's a perpetual kale and I managed to get back in contact with Charles Dowden who told me exactly what it was because I got it from his garden. Look at the structure in there of how thick the actual stem is. Uh, you can buy this but it's best to buy cuttings and to uh, pass them on like that. It's getting a bit big for that section to be honest so I, I might cut it back so who knows I may find a few good cuttings in there and if I do I will let you know and then if anybody wants them they can. This is my standard gooseberry I'm trying to find if there are any gooseberries there in fact there you go there's one there if the camera can focus it so there are a few gooseberries there but I'm going to have to keep an eye on this because in this section of the plot is where the squirrels like to come and hang out and I don't want them eating them before I've got a chance won't be long now before my fox gloves will be bursting into life these stems are really strong and just in a week or two's time they're really going to burst out. I thought I could smell something. It's the elderflower. And in about a week's time this will be perfect for making elderflower cordial or elderflower champagne. I'll tell you about that when the time comes. Right then, let's have a look inside the shed. Here we go. Oh, hello. You keeping nice and dry in the shed? Yeah? Oh, I think somebody's been sleeping, have they? You've been in your bed sleeping. And now it's time for a bit of tea. There is nothing better than being in a greenhouse when it's raining. I haven't been here for about oh, three or four days. Been busy doing other things and everything is looking really good. I'm really pleased. It's, I've had far better results in this greenhouse, in the wooden greenhouse, than I did in the aluminium one, which is next door. My cabbage is here. This is called Tundra. They're ready to go out there. So I just need to find some space for them. And everything's really ready to go out. There's my borage. And look at these over here. I've just noticed these are my spare runner bean plants. Do you think they need going out? I think they're very keen. Look at them. They're going around my peppers. I've been quite surprised by the, the slowness of the growth regarding my peppers this year and really disgusted with my sweet corn. I know Muddy Boots has had an issue with his as well, and, but look at that, three out of an entire packet of sweet corn. Let's have a quick look at what's going on in the uh, greenhouse here. What's in here? I can't remember. Ah, that's my saltwort. Nothing showing just yet. And my Brussels sprouts. Who doesn't love a Brussels sprout? I love them. And these are ready to uh, go out in a few weeks. I want them to be a bit bigger yet. Almost the size of the uh, the cabbage. So they can be a bit uh, bigger before they go out. And the variety is called Maximus. But again, I've got loads of plants. I don't need all, all these plants. These are my other cucumbers called Mini Munch. These are the ones for indoors. They, they need a good water in as well, so I'll do that before I leave. These are some of the tram transplantings that I did. Look, look at my uh, sunflower there, the old Velvet Queen. But everything looking really rosy. My Cosmos, they're doing well. I, tr I transplanted them into their individual pots. And over here, now these 
need to really go in and I might do it in the next week or two because my tomatoes have their first flower on so I need to deal with them and these are the four that I've picked that I might possibly keep definitely that one that I've just showed you and the variety is Shirley good old favorite and in front of that my cucumbers yes my cucumbers are doing really well these are to go outside these are the the market more ones the bush variety and in the background there and these are really shot up in the last few days are my dahlias which are next door to these humongous plants called shark fin melon and they're really sturdy now so they'll be ready to go out and one of these these are my squash they're raring now these are my second sowing of my leeks and they are doing a bit better but still not impressed by them I may have to go off and buy some from the uh, from the shop and what's this this is my garlic chives doing really well so a job for this weekend will be to transplant these these are the everlasting straw f uh, flowers called helichrysums so they can be potted on as my rocket can as well and I was getting the nice rocket uh, shape to it so next to that the are uh, the potatoes which we've done in a previous video and these are my what are these crimson flowered broad beans they're ready to go out so I need to find a spot for them in fact it'll be interesting I'll put these into a different bed and then we can test whether the problem with my broad beans now is actually the soil or not and just behind that are my, what are they, my memory's going, asters, um, my asters and a bit of sage ready for Christmas and above my mallows. Now when you come into the greenhouse just keep an eye on things just sort of like that there, there's a bit of a leaf being eaten there so just do a bit of an investigation, take Take a few pots off, have a look between the crevices, look all the way up, see if there's any little beasties. That's my celeriac, that's ready to go out. I might do that next week as well. But when I put the camera down now, I'll just go through all this and have a really good hunt to see if I can find any little slugs and snails that might have slipped through the net. So let's start off in a very hot greenhouse. These are the last of my vegetables now to go in the ground. These are some leeks, uh, northern lights, and behind there the Brussels sprouts, which will go in, this, in the space of the um, broad beans. So some plants ready to go out. Uh, cabbages over there, the variety is tundra, and a pom-pom dahlia. That's another dahlia next door to it. And these are, what are these now? Uh, the echinaceas. So they need to be put into the ground as well. But it's looking rather empty in here now compared to the start of the year. And over here are my two tomato plants. They're in and you start feeding a tomato plant when you see the fruit. And on this one I've got some tomatoes actually starting to grow, so I'll start feeding that this weekend. And above that, these are my cucumber, cucumbers. These will be going into uh, bigger pots, along with the sweet peppers. And the fuchsias are really loving this heat at the moment, and look, look at that. It's just about to come out and flower. It's very windy outside today. It has been for the past few weeks. Let's, let's just stroll out gently. If you get offended by weeds, then turn off now. Or if you're that bothered, and then come and do, do it yourself. So the pond is looking rather well. Frogs are loving it. Now that the things in the greenhouse are uh, becoming empty, I've got the stage in, and I need to demolish this, along with weed in this uh, bed. This is my crop of bindweed intermingled with some fruit. 
so that's the task for the weekend. Now this I'm surprised by. I've been away for two days, but the veg truck, it's virtually dried out. It's the first time it's ever happened. So I, I give it a few lots of water. And I also harvested my strawberries. So I had some strawberries for breakfast today. Next door to that, they are my mints. And if we just have a quick look over here, in these larger pots, I've got some, uh, what are they called? My memory's going. Those little blue things. I'm gonna have to look at the label. These are blueberries. There we are, we got there in the end. Next door to some sweet peas. Fox loves are now coming to the end. You wait for two years, and then within two weeks they've flowered and gone. So flowers, uh, oxide daisies, and uh, calendulas. Oh, and there's a rose at the background there. Now uh, over here in the corner, this is my first year of cropping, but look at all those gooseberries. What do you say, gooseberries or gooseberries? And over here, we've had so much wind for the past month. But look, if you go to walk down into the bottom of the plot, let me just put my hand there, there's a bit of sun coming in. If you look at the bottom of the plot there, you've got to actually move around the, uh, the apple tree now. Right, let's have a look at the veg garden. But I'm going to start up the top end and then we'll stop getting this lens into the sun. Let's start off up by the hot composter, which is hitting 40 degrees. Let's see if we can see some uh, steam. Now, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but I could de definitely uh, feel the heat when I opened that. So let's have a look at what, what, what we've got here. Again, like I've said, there's been so much wind. Look, look at these trees, they're nearly snapping over. So I need to get a, a stake or something to uh, really stake that in. Um, right, let's start off. What are these? Runner beans? My runner beans are starting to go up. Oh look, I've got a bit of bindweed again. That's one of my biggest problems on this side, is bindweed. Next door to this. Look at these. These will be ready for harvesting soon. Broccoli, especially that one. In fact, I might have that tomorrow. Um, back to loads of them. Now, next door to the broccoli is the cauliflowers. And as you know, I tied them up the other week to keep the sun off. Let's have a look if we can see. Is there anything in there? Look at that. And over here I've got some more um, runner beans, so, and they're slowly going up the canes now. This is my tea, tea plant out of the three that I had. Only one of them survived. The rest got hit by uh, frost and stuff. Now look at this bed. This is my potatoes. You can take these off if you want to. The, the saying is you take the flour off the potato so that the goodness goes into developing the tubers rather than developing flowers. But again, if you were a farmer, you're not gonna go out throughout your whole field and do it. So it's up to you. My carrot bed with some beans on the end. And I need to develop a system of raising this, uh, what do you call it? Raising this fleece up a bit. Give them some more room to grow. And in the bed in front, this is my first early potatoes, which I've been harvesting for quite a few weeks now. And very nice, this variety is Red Duke of York. Another crop that's coming to the end now are the broad beans. They've been attacked by a late uh, dose of blight. Not blight, black fly. A late dose of black fly. So I'm going to whip these out, harvest what I've got, and um, put in its place the Brussels sprouts, I think. Next door to that are the shallots, and I've started to harvest these as well. I just tend to lift a pile up and cut them as like spring and spring onions. That's a good view there of the uh, 
potatoes. And in this bed, some more onions, white and red ones. Now down in this corner, this is where all my uh, pumpkins are. Pumpkins, courgettes, in fact I think I, think I saw a courgette this morning. There we are, there's just one there. Courgette and my outdoor cucumber. And in the corner I had two spare tomato plants so I just threw them in. And in the final bed I have another cucumber on the end and peas. My peas are really starting to fill out now. I must stop eating them because I tend to pick them when they're really small like that and have a bit of a meal. So there's still lots to do. I still need to plant some more beans there and in this bed to put in things like um, beetroot. One thing that has been good are these uh, pear trees. They've really established themselves. Now if you remember the, the fox did a bit of damage with my peas and I managed to save it and then the next thing the wind came and was blowing my frame from side to side but it seems to have settled down now there and I'm not going to move it because it's not doing any harm and I think it's fairly rigid now it's sort of blown itself into a, a into a spot that it prefers but I'm just waiting for them to fill up and uh, I should get about eight to nine peas per pod so I'm looking forward to them but I need to put in another um, row of them so it's starting to get starting to come together now I'm getting crops from it and they certainly help the raised beds so let's quickly start in the greenhouse before it gets too hot for me and the tomatoes, they're starting to appear. So I'm currently feeding these once a week now with a just a general purpose uh, tomato feed. Now these are my peppers and I love a bell pepper. But something's gone wrong here. Seed packet or, or something, but that is not a bell pepper. Uh, and I don't think these are either next door to it. But whatever they are, they're looking good. They're really putting on a bit of weight now. Down here, these are th some things waiting to go out. There are uh, leeks, some cabbages, and my Brussels sprouts. I've now got space for them, so. These are some uh, plants. These, this is my Echinacea, which I'm going to transplant later today. And next door to that, some asters. The cucumber, finally got the cucumber in the uh, pots and, and there's one or two little ones there. And these, I managed to get hold of some poppies. I saw them at BBC Gardeners World and managed to get the, the last uh, set before they sold out. So the worktop is looking pretty empty at the moment compared to earlier in the year. And there in the corner are some diaceas and another cucumber. So let's go outside. By the pond here, I've had a fantastic flush of roses this year. That's the first yellow one that's appearing. These ones, they've really been stunning this year. Put on a really good display. And look at all these buds that are still waiting to come up so like I said I haven't really focused on this top half this this month lavender starting to uh, come out and I'm starting to smell it every time I go past now I've made a decision I'm going to get rid of my veg truck there's not a lot in there other than strawberries and a few herbs and I just think it takes up a hell of a lot of space for strawberries that only crop for a few weeks in the year so I'm going to get rid of it and in this section I'm going to put a new flower bed and a few herbs. I'm actually going to make a list of what herbs that I use because I don't use that many and I'll just grow. In the past I've grown things 
purposely to make a video of but moving forward I'm just growing and doing things that I want. I split this grass up last month and I took the whole thing out and raised the level of this uh, bed because it, ha it had sunk quite a bit and I've managed to put another uh, bed of it there but as I can see cats or foxes are loving it as well. Let's have a quick look at this rose. It's at the back here and it's not very easy to get to. I bought that uh, a few years ago. Again, can't remember the names. That's one thing I want to get better at, is remembering the names of uh, things. So there's a few little plants there. The oxide daisies have been great this year. And now the foxgloves are finished. I'm leaving the heads there. and. I can just about hear the seeds. If I wanted to save the seed, I would take that spike off, put it into a brown paper bag, and put them in, in, the, in the shed somewhere. But I'm quite happy for the seeds to fall on the floor and create a little woodland area there. Next door to that is the mallow. This mallow has been here for quite a few years and it doesn't matter how much you hack it back it comes back every year and puts on a stunning display and this is the annual mallow that I did from seed he's just hiding down there look at it loads of it, it makes a really nice bush and next door to that my sweet peas are now starting to come to an end ah in the corner there I forgot to tell you about is a hanging basket of fuchsias that I did called I think variety is icy pink or some, something something like that icy pink also I made another decision this top section here I cut the apple tree back quite severely because fruit this year a lot of people are saying it hasn't been a really good year for fruit and it had fallen over a bit so I needed to prop the thing up so I've sacrificed a lot of the fruit this year for the sake of trying to get it back under control. My everlasting straw flowers are just starting to come up. These are the ones I did from seed. So this section here is a section that I'm starting from scratch again. It'll be a nice uh, fruit section. So basically moving forward it'll be fruit on the right and then on the left here will be herbs and flowers. So I'm getting a bit more structure. Now one thing that I have done is I've taken the fence down. And I did it initially just to clean the bottom here. As you can see I've started to take some of the weeds out. But I actually quite like not having the fence there. The other side, I don't know, I might take that bit down as well. But I would like to keep the gate, so I think that might look a bit funny just a gate but who knows let's just see so let's go through the gate then and have a look what's happening in the veg garden because there are some crops ready to come and let's start off in this bed in the courgettes I will be having that for my dinner tonight I've got a nice recipe in mind where that will be used and next door to that I have the uh, winter squash and a cucumber and I haven't harvested any yet because they're still quite small but there they are just across from that bed no let's go up the left side and then we'll no let's start down here so the peas have gone they went, came out the other day and again cucumbers I'm going to have loads of there's another one down there. It's a very hot day today and everything does need a really good watering. I've moved some dahlias from the greenhouse now. These are ready to go into the ground. And look at that. Now this is the shark fin melon. And it's really taking over now. It's falling off the bed and 
go in all over the place. So if you do get one of these, then make sure to give it plenty of space. I can just see in the corner there. Look at that. There's one of them just poking themselves up. So across from there are my onions. And I haven't paid much attention to these over the last few months. I've just left them there. Let them get on with the growing. I've got white ones on the left here. And then over in on the right, I've got some red ones. I do prefer the red ones, if I'm honest. And they're putting on some tremendous weight now. And they'll be there until, oh, August, the end of August. Now, as you can see, I've removed the broad beans. I've got all the, uh, the tops ready now for the compost bin. And I need to weed this bed. But on the left-hand side are my shallots. Now, with shallots, I usually harvest them as spring greens. But this year I've had so many of them that I've just left them in the ground. So if you've got any ideas on how to uh, store these for the future, I was thinking about pickling maybe, I'm open to suggestions. Now let's go back out and have a look at this bed. I've got some French climbing beans going up a stick, so you don't need a, a lot of space for things like this. And then in this bed, under the cover, are my carrots. Let's see if I can have a look underneath. The variety of these are sweet candle. I'm keeping this fleece on for quite a while longer just to deter the, the carrot fly. Again, another bed is starting to become free here. So I might put my sprouts in this bed. This is where the broccoli was, and there's another splash just coming. There's a few little side ones, so I'll uh, harvest them and put them into storage as well. And the, uh, on the last bed here, same sort of setup as uh, the other one you saw. Run of beans this time. Now, if that looks dead, that's because it's um, bindweed. And what I've done is I've just snapped it at the bottom of the plant, so that's why they may look dead. But the runner beans have started. Oh, in fact, there's a few. Look at that. There's a few there. And this variety is called Firestorm. And just to the side are my parsnips. There they are. I did sow some more uh, last month. One of the problems I've got on this plant is bindweed. It really is a pain. And these are my new fruit trees. And I've even got a few apples coming. With fruit, in the first year, only let one or two apples appear because you wanted to put more energy into the plant than producing crops. And again, runner beans are doing well. Look at this here. This is another one of those shark fin melons. It's everywhere. Let's have a look what I've got here. There's a weed, let me get rid of that. Oh, that's in the pot, okay. I'll sort that out later. This is the last of my camellia, my tea bush. The other two just died. I actually felt they sent them out at the wrong time of year. And hiding amongst the shark fin melon is my celeriac. And again, they're putting on a bit of weight now at the base. In hot weather, keep them really, really wet. It's about midday at the moment, so I'll water everything this evening. And don't forget to water potatoes. It's the one thing that people tend to forget about. But look at these. If anything, these need to calm down a bit, rather than grow more. Look, they've put so much weight on, you can't actually see the raised bed that they're in. Let me just step back a bit to give you a really good 
view of them just to see how much weight they've got. Look at it. So I'm hoping for really big things when it comes to those uh, potatoes, which I will harvest round about September, possibly October. I might even store them in the soil as well, just leave them there. So I can just see a tail down there. I think that's Bessie. So there's a lot going on. There's a lot of spare ground now so I can fill with some more plants like the ones I've got in the greenhouse and maybe some lettuce and some beetroot, things like that. Well, the heat is certainly starting to rise and I don't think even a cup of tea would cool me down in this weather. So I'm going to pop home and have a look what's in the fridge that's cold. So let's start off in the greenhouse where it's empty. There's not anything in here now. All the crops have been cleared. I'm in the middle of cleaning everything, mainly because I'm going to have a, a busy autumn coming up and I won't have a lot of time to be spending in the greenhouse. So I thought the best thing to do was to give it a clean and get it ready for next year. Beautiful fuchsia there in the corner. Like I said, there's nothing to write home about here. This top end has been neglected for quite a while now because I was going to give this bit up, but we've heard from the council and they said that I'm not allowed to. I either give up the whole plot or I keep it. So it looks like I'm gonna to have to come up with a plan of putting this back into production. And I'm thinking this side here, I'll keep that as flowers. And then on the right hand side, I'll grow a crop that needs a lot of space. Maybe sweet corn. Do a bit of a sweet corn field there or something like that. So I've got to think what needs a lot of space in order to get a good crop. My lavender bushes are coming to the end now. And if I want to cut back the lavender, then the week before the kids go back to school is a perfect time to give it the summer chop. So just, ah, look, hold on, I'm just looking now. There's a bit of a beetle in there. Look at that. That is the beetle there. It also affects rosemary. If you have that on the rosemary plants, then you need to get rid of it. So I think that one might be going. Hold on. A bit difficult with one hand. That one might, might be going for a little dive in the pond. Bessie there, keeping an eye on the rest of the lavender. All right, Bessie. So let's have a look at what else is going on. Like I said, Nothing to write home about at the top end here. My shark fin melon has actually come into the flower section here. Look at it, it's massive. If you want something to really grow all over the place, then that is surely a plant for you. I'm going to spend the weekend cleaning this side of the plot up and I'm gonna cut this back. Even though there's fruits there, I've got quite a f uh, few fruits down in the actual veg section, so I don't need any more. Over here, my foxgloves. It took two years to do. They're now at the seed stage. So I might collect some seed, or I might just let it drop, and then it can just grow again next year. Look, the melon has gone all the way over there into the next plot as well. Right, let's go in and have a look what's going on. So, through the gate we go. I've decided to put the blue fence back uh, once I've done a bit of weeding. But let's have a look at what's going on in the actual garden. A lot of the beds have now come to an end. And this is the sign that I mentioned that I had sent to me. And beautiful it is too, amongst the shark fin. But before we go over there, let's start in this first bed. This is my squash bed. And they haven't put as much weight on 
as I would like at this time of year. Now squash is something that I do like, squash soup, roasted squash. So I'm thinking this could be something I could grow in the top end of the plot and give it a really good amount of space. This is my Taunton kale. It's like a kale cabbage. You can just cut it off and it just grows and grows. And throughout the winter it grows as well. So if you want something to uh, really fill up a plot, get some of that. So, I cut this back about a week ago, and look, this is all the new growth. I cut it back because I wanted to weed the path. But like I said, I'm not going to bother about saving it. I'm going to cut it back and deal with the fruit that I've got. Ah, look at them. Some dahlias that I, I've done. I do like a pom-pom dahlia. These are actually in pots. And look again, the shark fin melon and a bit of bindweed there in the corner. But the shark fin melon is everywhere, taking it over. I'll show you some fruit in a second. There's one fruit in here somewhere. Where is it? There's one. That's quite a small one. Another one. This is where the carrots were. So they're, they're gone now. They were whipped out the other week. So this bed is empty. This needs to be weeded. And in all the beds, where there's nothing in them, I'm going to put some field beans in. And the field beans will stay in there all over winter. And then come the spring, you just cut the field beans down and turn it into the soil. These are some uh, French beans. I'm leaving all my beans now. I've got too many runner beans and French beans. So I'm just going to leave them all go to seed now. Again, a bit of shark fin in the corner there. This bed, uh, this had the cauliflowers in, so I've just put a few seedlings in of the echinacea and some flowers that I had in the greenhouse. Just popped them in there. It's starting to rain, so I don't think we'll be out here for much longer. All right, so let's go back down to these, hello Rusty. Let's go back down to these beds. That's where the onions were. So again, field beans will go in there. And what was in this one, Rusty? Broad beans, you say? Broad beans and shallots were in this, and again that needs to be weeded. But the shark fin melons all over the place. Now something I'm looking forward to lifting out are my potatoes. This variety is called Rudolph, which is a red one, and it's a new one on me. But there's so much growth that you can't actually see where the where the path is there. Can, can you, Rusty? No. There's so much growth falling all over the place, including. Another shark fin melon. Now in this raised bed, there is actually, if I can show you, some celeriac. There it is, and it's clogging up rather nicely. There it is, where is it? Can you just about see it? There it is. That's my celeriac. With a backdrop of runner beans again I'm gonna let go to seed but in the runner beans surprise surprise is a shark fin melon like I said if you want something to really cover a plot then get one of them I think I've counted about eight uh, all over the entire site and in this bed here are my parsnips and they're putting on tremendous weight now and these won't be harvested until oh de December and throughout the winter and again in this corner some more runner beans which I will be leaving for seed I moved my veg truck up to this section here and I'm now using it as a bit of a compost bin a dumping ground. Look at that. There was a path there, but it's now been overtaken by the shark fins. Let's have a quick look at the compost bin. I haven't actually looked inside the hot composter for a while. It's 30 degrees. Look at those worms in there. It's a bit cold. I might need to 
get some stuff in it to heat it up. What do you say, Rusty? There it is. So yes, the allotment is not in the best state. Would I do the shark fin melon again? No. Because it's completely taken over everything. And you could say I could put that down in that section down there to grow. But I don't think I'm going to like the harvest, to be honest. So I'm not going to grow it again, but it's something that I can say that I've had a go at. Look at these, really beautiful. I want to do far more of them next year. So let's have a look again at this top section. So if you've got any suggestions on how I can fill this, I want a crop that, like sweet corn, you know, something that you need a quite a bigger space to get a decent uh, return from it. And over here, I will start work on this this weekend. The cats have been loving it though, because they can hide and jump out and scare each other when the other isn't expecting it. So yes, I think this is possibly the busiest this plot has ever looked. But as the old saying says, just keep calm, don't be worried about it, and garden on. Even better if you've got a cup of tea. And sit down and enjoy that sunshine. Well, here we go, it's time for a September tour. I start up in the top here. This is my veg drug, which has now turned into a bit of a reserve as a compost pile. And in this top bed, my parsnips are looking really great. I actually harvested one of them last week. And the usual bit of advice is you always lift your parsnips after the first frost because it makes them sweeter. But this variety was the first variety that I've eaten before the frost and it tasted absolutely beautiful. So I'll definitely be growing this variety again. Now over in the next bed is my celeriac and there are disputes about whether you should earth them up or take the surrounding leaves on the bottom of the bulbs. So I've taken the leaves off half of them, I've left the leaves on the rest. So we'll run a little test. This bed is empty, there's nothing in this one. I've been emptying uh, the remaining banks of compost that I've got and filling that one up. But over on this side, this has turned into a bit of a, a flower storage place. I had some spare seedlings, so I just put them in there. There's the everlasting straw fl flowers, some calendulas over there in the corner, there's some spin spinach in the far corner, and asters and there's a load of things in there. Now next door is, this bed has some green manure in. It looks like broad beans. It's from the same sort of family. But at the end of the year, uh, next spring in fact, the idea is that you cut the, the foliage down to the ground and then you turn it all in to the soil so that you are feeding the soil with a bit of goodness. Now, on to the next bed, the plant that refuses to die. This is the, the shark fin melon, which I pulled out about a month ago and left it on this uh, raised bed in order for it to rot down. That's what the idea was. But it took hold again and it started producing more fruit. So I'm a bit unsure how to kill it. So as you can see, it's going down the side of the path now and it was actually all, all the way up to the compost bin and there's about four or five fruits in there. So if you definitely want something for ground cover and to suppress the weeds, a shark fin melon will do. And all this is just from one plant. It's amazing. Now next door to that, this bed is empty as well. Well, empty, excluding these few little things here, some 
mint and uh, thyme and a dahlia that's coming to the end of his life and my sign if you remember I had a sign sent to me a couple of months ago now and there it is beautiful colours and rusty it's all the way down the bottom there at the moment the fox keeps bringing me gifts and today he brought me a hat a few days ago we had some gloves a bit of weeding needs to go on in the central path so that's the job that's coming up but it doesn't bother me it shows that the ground is fertile and this bed has now come to an end this is where I where my uh, squash were but as you saw in the video last week I lifted my uh, squash up so I need to take all the plants out and I'll put some what are they called field beans into this bed as well the next bed is also empty and the next one up is as well I'm sort of I don't want to say put in the allotment to sleep because I'll still be coming down but what I am doing is I've ordered quite a lot of uh, fruit just as we pass here have a look at my neighbors grapes look at them ready to be harvested and the bloom on them look at that really great and she makes juice from them so what I'm going to do, to do is the plan is next year in these raised beds I'm going to grow my squash I might do a pumpkin in fact I'm not sure yet but it'll be mainly for squash and fruit and I've got about 60 or 80 strawberry plants coming so I'll be putting strawberries into all these beds and the vegetables will be grown mostly down on my new plot which you saw in last week's program we just go down to this section here if you remember a couple of months ago I wanted to give up half my plot but the committee came back and said that you couldn't you either gave it all up or you kept it so this side here has become a bit of a dumping ground for some work that's going on in the uh, flower garden which a tour of the flower garden I'll be putting a video up of that uh, in, the few, in the next few days as well so at the moment it's become a bit of a dumping ground but this will become the fruit garden in time and I've already got down the bottom there a cherry that's been there for a few years now and below that is some um, rhubarb which is actually a, a vegetable not a fruit so it's a work in progress that's the thing with gardening you can get things finished and they can look good for a few years and then you change your mind or you do something or you're just ill you can't get to the plot and it doesn't take much for nature to start to reclaim itself rusty there now it's some beautiful weather at the moment aren't we rusty it's quite warm now but last sunday was a scorcher there's nothing in the greenhouse going on at the moment autumn has certainly arrived very early on my allotment this year um, there's the greenhouse down there and there's absolutely nothing going on in there at the moment it's empty I've been concentrating quite a, a quite a lot these last week or two on the, uh, the flower garden which is on the left down there which you will see a tour of in the next few days like I said but one of the jobs I've been doing this month and this is why I haven't really been able to get on much is just go past Rusty there committees they've been measuring plots again and they discovered that the plot next door 
is quite short and now there's a new person on there uh, we're looking at the boundary line again there we are so, she, so she's already started to cut her bit of plot and it was discovered that I had about two foot more than I should although I am going to measure the entire plot and see exactly what I am paying for so the the boundary line's been re what's the word been moved and look at those, those, those potatoes I found they were just in, in the ground and one of the first things I ever planted on this plot when I came here 10 years ago was this rose and it hasn't really it was a really cheap rose I bought it for about a pound and it was okay for the first two or three years but then it just became rather poor so that's coming out so as you can see I did have two paving slabs there uh, up until a week ago but I've taken one out and I'm going to do what the committee says for an easy life and make my plot a, a, a foot shorter and I'm okay to do that because like I said this isn't going to be the main plot moving forward this is only going to be for fruit and flowers so I'm I'm okay if this was the main plot I might argue a bit more that I've, that I've had it for 10 years and that you can't be changing the boundary lines now but I'm gonna give in all for an easy life and on this side as well I've been busy doing the boundary line as you can see down there I've put some boards down to hold back the flower bed and I'm making the path a lot wider so I've given up one foot on this side and a foot on the other side so feels like there's not a lot actually going on on the allotment at the moment but all these boundary line jobs they do take a while and they do take you away from actually playing with the plants well that's the allotment tour for September like I said it feels like I haven't really done much this month but all this boundary work takes time it's a bit like doing my winter jobs a bit early that's the way that I'm looking at it at the moment anyway